Hello, historians. Today, we are going to start talking about some leaders of the Renaissance. And the first thing that I want to say about this is that nothing happens accidentally. History doesn't just happen randomly. The choices that we make every single day affect history. There are leaders in every time period, but none stand out so much as the ones in the Renaissance. Today, we're going to talk about some leaders in the Renaissance and how they affected the development of Europe. You are going to choose one of these historical figures to write an essay on. And essays are one of the main ways that historians communicate and share knowledge. And this will be true in middle school, but it will especially be true in high school. In history classes, you will start writing a lot of essays. And our goal in middle school is to prepare you for high school. So as a historian, you are going to become an expert on one leader from the Renaissance. The goal of this presentation is to give you a little bit of information about each person so you know who you're picking. And your essay question is, what role did your historical figure's achievements play in the transformation of society during the Renaissance? So what exactly does that phrase in your question mean? The transformation of society. Transformation is defined as a thorough or dramatic change in form or appearance. As you write down each figure's achievements, think about how these achievements changed society. So the first person we're starting off with is Queen Elizabeth I. Her occupation was that she was the Queen of England. She was born September 7th, 1533 in Greenwich, England. And she died March 24th, 1603 in Richmond, England. And she was best known for ruling England for 44 years. So some of her overall achievements are being a female ruler at a time when it was believed that women couldn't rule a country, turning England Protestant once more at a time when people were persecuted for being Protestant, and for ruling England for 44 years. And that's all you're going to write about Queen Elizabeth. We're going to go through these pretty quickly. You will learn a lot more about your selected person after you start researching them. So our next person that we can choose from is Michelangelo, and his occupation was that he was a sculptor, painter, and architect. He was born March 6, 1475 in Caprese, Italy, and he died February 18, 1564 in Rome, Italy. And he was best known for David, the Paeta, and the paintings on the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. So Michelangelo's overall achievements were the Paeta, David, and the paintings of the Sistine Chapel. And so here we can see those two sculptures. This one on the left here is the Paeta. That's a sculpture of Mary holding the body of the dead Jesus. And here is a picture of his sculpture, David. And this is really zoomed in. David is super, super tall. Uh, but this is all of the detail on his face. And then this is a really, really big picture of the Sistine Chapel. The Sistine Chapel is a huge church that he painted the ceiling of. Then we get to Johann Gutenberg. His occupation was that he was an inventor. He was born around 1398 in Mainz, Germany. He died on February 3rd, 1468 in Mainz, Germany. And he was best known for introducing movable type and the printing press to Europe. So his overall achievements were bringing movable type to the Western world because it had already been invented in China, but he's the one that brought it to Europe. He invented the printing press and one of his achievements is the Gutenberg Bible. And so here is a picture of the printing press. Here is where the words would actually get stamped on the piece of paper and then the paper would get fed through. Our next figure is Leonardo da Vinci. He was an artist, inventor, and scientist. He was born April 15th, 1452 in Vinci, Italy, and he died May 2nd, 1519 in Amboise in the Kingdom of France. He was best known for the Mona Lisa, the Last Supper, and the Vitruvian Man. So his overall achievements were the Mona Lisa, the Last Supper, and his notebooks that he wrote hundreds of paintings, inventions, everything down in. 
And so this on the left is a picture of the Mona Lisa, whereas on the right, this is a picture of the Last Supper. We then get to William Shakespeare. His occupation was that he was a playwright, actor, and poet. He was born April 26, 1564, or actually he was baptized on April 26 in Stratford-upon-Avon in England, but he was likely born on April 23rd. He died April 23rd, 1616 in Stratford-upon-Avon in England. He was best known for writing plays such as Romeo and Juliet, Hamlet, and Macbeth. And his overall achievements were that he published 38 plays, he published hundreds of poems, and he changed the English language by inventing new words. So then we get to Andreas Vesalius. His occupation was that he was an anatomist and physician, and those words means an anatomist is someone who is very familiar with the human body and how it works, and a physician is a doctor. So he was born on December 31st, 1514 in Brussels, Belgium, and he died October 15th, 1564 in Zacanthios, Greece. He was best known for revolutionizing the study of anatomy. So his overall achievements were that he published the seven books on the structure of the human body, and you absolutely do not have to write that name in Latin, you can write it in English. He also proved Galen's theories wrong. Galen was a physician from ancient Greece who had a bunch of theories about the body, but Vesalius proved them all wrong. And he also conducted autopsies to learn about the human body. So an autopsy is after you're dead, someone cuts you up, looks at your insides, tries to figure out why you died, but he was studying the human body to figure out how it worked. And here are some of his anatomical sketches from his book. So we can see it's a very accurate skeleton and it's an accurate showing of all the muscles on a human being. Then we get to Albrecht Durer. And his occupation was that he was a painter, drawer, and engraver. He was born May 21st, 1471 in Nuremberg, Germany and he died April 6, 1528 in Nuremberg. He was best known for spreading the method of woodblock printing throughout Europe. His overall achievements were that he pioneered the woodblock print in Europe, he spread the woodblock print around Europe using religious and classical history, and his many achievements were his many paintings and his woodblock prints. And so here are some examples of woodblock print. So woodblock print is when you engrave a really detailed dra drawing onto a block of wood, you paint over it with ink or paint, and then you stamp it down on a piece of paper. So all of these weren't just drawn by pencil. They were actually carved out of a piece of wood and stamped onto a piece of paper. And you can see he was very, very detailed. And here is another image of one of his woodblock prints. Just look at the details in this. He was very, very meticulous. Then we get to Catherine de' Medici. Her occupation was a queen who was regent for three French kings. So a regent is if a king or queen isn't able to run the country on their own, usually in the case of them being very sick, or in Catherine's case, in the leader being a child, someone elects a regent. And a regent is basically the person who is running the country while the king or queen is too young or too sick. So she was born April 13th, 1519 in Florence, Italy, and she died January 5th, 1589 in Blois, France. And she is best known for her power behind the scenes when she was regent. So remember, she wasn't the actual queen, but she had all the power. She was controlling the government. So her overall achievements were her ruling as queen, ruling as regent for her three sons, and the Edict of January 1562. And then we get to our final person that you could choose. This is Galileo Galilei. He was a scientist, mathematician, and astronomer. He was born February 15, 1564, in Pisa, Italy, and he died January 8, 1642, in Tuscany, Italy. 
He was best known for improving the telescope to be used to study the planets and stars. So his overall achievements were supporting Copernicus's theory that the Earth revolves around the Sun, the principle of inertia, and improving the magnifying capabilities of his telescope to view the stars. So, who do you want to write about? Whose achievements sound most interesting to you? Remember, your essay question is what role did your historical figure's achievements play in the transformation of society during the Renaissance? Look through your notes and look through each person's overall achievements. Who can you write a convincing essay on? Here are my sources. You are good to go ahead, finish up your notes, and start picking your person.